Uh, but first up, let's talk uh, about, uh, well, the hugest number of complaints uh, for ITV. They've been hit with 4,165 Ofcom complaints. Um, it's the largest, uh, the overwhelming number of complaints, the largest they've had uh, for quite a long time and certainly this year. And this is all after Bridgerton star Joa Ando uh, prompted fury by calling the Buckingham Palace balcony at the end of the coronation on Saturday terribly white. It's the most complained about moment of the year so far. Numerous complaints, but all cast today has refused to comment uh, on those uh, figures. Uh, she was appearing as a guest during ITV's coverage of the coronation, and she made the comment when the royals were all standing on the Buckingham Palace balcony to watch the traditional red arrows fly past. Uh, she said, looking at all those young people, um, there is a bit of me that has gone from the rich diversity of the Abbey to the terribly white balcony. I'm very struck by that. The terribly white balcony. We discussed this on the show on Monday. But let's talk about this with Ben Jones. He's a deputy case director at the Free Speech Union. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, as interesting the people who complained, I genuinely don't really not big fan of people making sort of off-com complaints generally for obvious reasons as a broadcaster. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure I'd be uh, agreeable with a lot of what Ofcom would try and do in terms of trying to uh, curtail people's freedom of speech. Um, people have a right, though, to be angry when someone says something which is... If it was another a person of another race saying it, it would be construed very openly as racist. If someone's terribly white, you'd never. If anyone said the equivalent, what a terribly black balcony, that would absolutely cause outrage as a racist comment. And yet there seems to be a free pass if it's about white people. But I'm sure you're as concerned as I am, and I'm a member of the Free Speech Union where you work. Um, there's always this view that if someone says something that we don't like, there's this call to have them cancelled somehow, to lose their job, to be punished in some way. So what do you make of what she had to say, but also the 4,000-odd Ofcom complaints? Well, I think, first of all, let her speak. All she's done is expose views that I think most people, myself certainly, would find to be unpalatable and divisive to uh, criticism, to scrutiny, to rebuttal. That's all she's actually done. So. I, I understand why people are angry. I, I don't like what she said at all. I think it's unnecessarily divisive. And it, it, it comes to it seems to me that it comes from a, a very unhelpful uh, us versus them mentality, mm. which I really don't like from anybody of any ethnicity. Um, but I can see why people are angry. So, for instance, the Free Speech Union, we very often deal with cases where people are being bombarded in their workplaces by various types of training course, be it on white privilege or unconscious bias. And a whole suite of uh, EDI initiatives that take a. a when very you say EDI, stance. that's equality, diversity, and inclusion yeah. initiatives. Yeah. Yeah, and so people are being bombarded by that at their workplace, uh, in the NHS, in schools and universities, and in woke corporations as well in the private sector. And so to be bombarded by that and the idea that um, that you are inherently racist and have to atone for that in some yeah. way, no matter what you actually think or say or do, uh, and then to turn on the television and see somebody making a comment that is, as you've said. Um, completely unthinkable uh, if it were framed in the reverse way. I think obviously it's something that's going to make people feel very angry yeah. indeed. I mean, that's the thing. And what's interesting, of course, it wasn't picked up on by the, the hosts on that ITV show. She did do an, a BBC interview and she sort of said, look, she didn't mean any offence. Well, I'm sure she didn't. I'm sure she's not a bad person. But again, this sort of language, you know, would, would the same rules, as you say, applied in a different, to, from, a, from a different race person to, to a, another race, would that, would we would we be accepting of that? But the Radio 4 host, Paddy O'Connell, for whom I have a lot of time, very nice guy, he told her she had nothing to apologise for. Now, you can just imagine a BBC host saying quite the opposite. Um, for somebody said something else. And we constantly, we have a situation where we've got um, people of, of, of mixed or, or, or race and, and other ethnicities, um, minority ethnicities in government who are being accused of being racist and xenophobic and this being openly discussed and in lots of ways often, you know, endorsed, you know, tacitly by a lot of, you know, people on TV, BBC and others. Um, and yet they don't speak out when someone says something like that. Um, but, and that... That is a point that people, they've got a right to say, this is unfair, the rules the rules are different for different people. And if that isn't racist, when the rules are different for different people, purely because of the colour of their skin when they say something, then th th I don't know what is racist other than that. And that isn't just a hypothetical, uh, theoretical argument, no. Julia. So, for instance, we, we helped a uh, train conductor who worked for West Midland Trains called Simon Isherwood, and he was overheard at the end of an equality diversity uh, training course on white privilege, uh, complaining, do they have black privilege in Ghana? He found the whole course insulting, frustrating... Perfectly legitimate divided. question. 
Right. And for that, he was fired uh, and had to fight a years long battle uh, through the employment tribunal. The free speech union was able to help him with and ultimately he won. So they were delighted with the result. But nonetheless, he, he lost his job. And, had to go through and, an and also system. it forced other people. Other people are now silent because they know that's the sort of thing that could happen to them. And who wants to spend years fighting a tribunal? Yeah, you just don't want to, you just don't want to go there. So it has this awful chilling effect, um, and so this hypocrisy um, from the remarks we we saw and the different way in which the reverse racism yeah. is 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 tolerated or racially divisive language is tolerated, I think is something that fi people find very frustrating. But what we don't want, we're desperately we have a desperate need to rebuild the culture of free speech in Britain yeah. right now, and what we really don't want is a tit for tat exchange of council culture from the left and then the exactly. right. Exactly, the we need right. to be better. We need to be better. Can I ask you just finally, since I've got you on um, the story today? We talked about it a bit earlier on the show. The Oxford Union, uh, uh, this de debating society in Oxford at Oxford University, uh, they've invited Kathleen Stock, of course, a trans was it a, a gender critical feminist, as she's called, a turf. Uh, but basically, she's a feminist philosophy professor. She got hounded out of the University of Sussex for stating the simple fact that biological sex can't be changed. I mean, this is a simple medical biological fact, scientific fact. Uh, she was hounded out, accused of transphobia. I mean, literally, physically intimidated out of her job. She's been invited to speak. And now the Oxford Union, after complaints from the, I'm going to get it right, LGBTQ+, plus, I've never known what the Q and the plus stand for, uh, but they have come to society, they have complained that she should be uninvited, she should be silenced. The Oxford Union has replied saying we will provide welfare resources to help people who are sort of, you know, traumatised by hearing someone giving an opinion they don't like. Were they right to do that, given that they're not disinviting her, they're not oh, no platforming her? But were they right to pander to the idea that Hearing someone's views which might differ from yours in any way is an attack on your mental health. Well, I think it's a deeply uh, unwelcome attitude to take towards a, a different perspective. I mean, they can have therapy and therapy dogs and counselling or whatever if they need to, if they find it that upsetting to hear somebody from a different point of view. The Free Speech Union recently has launched something called the McTaggart Programme. We're offering funding to pro-free speech uh, students and student society at universities. Excellent. So there are young people, there are students fighting back against this. So don't get the idea uh, the, the, the young people there are a monolithic group of people who all hate free speech. Uh, there are some holdouts and we're trying to help them. Fantastic. Great work there. As always, Ben Jones there from the Free Speech Union. Thank you very much.